Before we begin the discussion of electrons in atoms, we are going to take a look at a type of energy called uh, electromagnetic energy. Your book has a picture of this type of energy on page 288. And you may have heard of kinetic energy, potential energy. In fact, there are many forms of energy. And the energy that travels in a wave is what we refer to as uh, electromagnetic energy. So I'm just going to place the book right here. Your book shows the visible part of the spectrum, which is actually very small compared to the entire spectrum. So we are going to look at properties like wavelength, which is the length of a wave, and we're going to look at frequency and energy. And so I've got this part on the notes here, and this is backwards than the way the book shows it. I got this out of a, a physics textbook, textbook, but the frequency is written in values across the top of the chart, and then the wavelength is written across the bottom. And if we, if I were to draw the wavelength for gamma rays, the waves would be very close together. That's a small wavelength or a short wavelength. If I were to draw the waves representing uh, radio waves, for example, the wavelength here would be very long. And so we can see uh, wavelengths. So I'm going to draw uh, a wave. So anything that bounces up and down, if you've had trigonometry, this would, might be called a sine wave or a cosine wave. But the wavelength is the distance for one complete wave. And we give wavelength this funny symbol, the Greek L, lambda. So uh, that right there would be the wavelength. We're going to focus more on the visible part of the spectrum, and we'll see that the wavelength for blue light is different than the wavelength of red light. So the wavelength, the uh, metric unit we're going to use is meters. And here we might want to remember that 10 to the 9th nanometers is equal to 1 meter. The wavelength of visible light is very small, so we generally record that in nanometers. The frequency is, we can't really see frequency, but we write frequency as kind of a funny looking V, that's another Greek symbol, and the frequency is equal to the number of cycles or number of complete waves per, that line means per, second. Or we could say complete revolutions per second. So usually we don't write a word in the numerator. So the units for frequency are just going to be one over second. And that's not going to be such a big deal to us. We're not really going to be calculating uh, values. Our book shows us how to do that, but that's not something that we're going to need to do. And then the energy of the this type of uh, wave, we just write as a capital E. So the energy E actually is... Um, in terms of frequency. So we'll see this equation in the book. H is a constant, Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34, and that's a joule times a second. So the typical energy unit that we'll use will be a joule. Again, we're not going to do calculations, but we are going to be talking pretty extensively about energy, or the energy of red light versus blue light, and then we need to know something about its frequency, if the frequency is high or low, and then the same thing with the wavelength. We're going to be looking at 
the wavelength of red light uh, versus the wavelength of blue light. So in this particular slide, we just want to get used to these um, definitions, wavelength, frequency, and energy, so that we can discuss the spectrum.